In this lecture and the exercise that follows, we'll talk specifically about callback hell, the problem that arises when you write callbacks in Node and especially nested callbacks in Node. We'll also look at promises as one way of addressing the callback hell problem. To give you an idea of what the typical callback hell problem will result in, let's revisit the index.js file from the previous exercise. And as I was uh, talking about it in the previous exercise, you notice that for each of the operations that we perform, the subsequent operation is included inside the callback function here and so on until you form a pyramid-like structure going in. So you see this uh, pyramid-like structure arising within your code. Now imagine that you need to perform multiple nested operations like this. Your code will become pretty soon very complex and not so easy to decipher. Now this is what in the Node.js world they refer to as callback hell. And there have been several ways of mitigating the problem that arises. Now you can't completely avoid this um, because of the fact that you have certain operations that need to complete before the next operation can be initiated. But we can rearrange the code in a way to uh, mitigate this problem. Promises being one such way of addressing this. So to summarize what we have just discussed, heavily nested callback code causes the callback hell problem. And it results from our tendency to write programs top down. We are still hung up with our sequential way of writing code. And so we see it more convenient to write code top to bottom and look at it as if it is executing in that order. Now we can work around the callback hell problem by not using anonymous functions for the callbacks, but instead declaring this fu those functions with specific names and then avoid the way we write the code as you saw here. That is one of the approaches that people take to uh, deal with the callback hell problem. There are several other approaches that have been suggested. E e links to a couple of articles in this regard are provided in the additional resources. But in this particular uh, lecture, I will concentrate on one particular approach that is used to deal with uh, the callback help problem, that is the use of promises. So we can use promises to tame the callback help problem to quite an extent. We will look at how promises help us in this regard. And in the exercise, we will see how because the node MongoDB driver already supports a promise interface, we can leverage that to rewrite our code to take advantage of promise support in the MongoDB driver. Briefly summarizing what a promise is, a promise is a mechanism that supports asynchronous computation. So if you have a, a amount of work that needs to be done, the promise acts as a proxy for a value which is not known at the moment, but uh, the promise is given to you that when the value becomes available, it'll be uh, available in the future. And so the promise represents a placeholder for that value. If the value resolves correctly, then your promise resolves correctly and you can have a uh, piece of code execute in order to handle the fact that the promise resolved correctly. If not, then you handle the error uh, in that situation. So a promise will resolve either into resolve or the rejection of the promise. A pending promise might either resolve when the value is correctly obtained. So in that case, it will resolve or uh, what we call as the fulfilling of the promise. So when the promise is resolved, then you will have a piece of code that handles the fact that the promise has been resolved. If the promise is rejected, you should also handle that situation, the rejection of the promise correspondingly within your code. So that is the reason whenever you create a promise, you always supply the resolve and the reject options for there. The resolve option is typically handled by the dot then option for your promise.
So why do we use promises? Promises are used because it addresses the callback help problem to a large extent, and promises can be chained. So for example, if you have one promise, which in turn triggers a call to another one, which will return a promise, and then that promise, the handling of that promise can be chained to the handler of the previous promise. So you can have a bunch of then calls that will handle the return of the value. Now, we will see the use of this in the exercise that follows this lecture. To consume a promise, you will register an appropriate um, callback function for um, when the consumer of a promise is notified either of the fulfillment or the rejection of the promise. So the callbacks are registered through the dot den um, to the promise. You will use the dot catch to catch the errors within uh, the return promise. Now the dot then methods can be chained together and as you will see in the exercise that follows. As an example, you would normally handle a promise by uh, chaining the dot then and the dot catch to the promise value. 